who is the master of all, hey, 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 the head of our lives, and we honor his presence. Um, I'm doing a little bit of sound check as I'm talking to you. I have, I have a tendency to get loud, so um, if you need to cut me off, that's fine. Uh, I got a big voice. Can't sing, but I can make noise. I want to thank again the Grace Team. I want to honor, amen, amen. Elder Pastor Roy, amen. 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 Yes. We want to uh, thank um, uh, those that came from Restoration. Yes. 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 Thank you, Evangelist Epps. What about Evangelist on staff? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, 
peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great call. I want to look at verse number 38. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. A topic that I want to leave with you is the call during the storm. Oh, man. The call during the storm. Hey, hey, hey! Come on, bitch! Hey, yes, sir! The storm. I want to preface this topic with uh, telling a true story about a king. And this particular king was in great distress. You know, right. Running a kingdom is not easy. And the kingdom was going through quite a few things. So the king, in his attempt to try to find peace, commanded that the chief artist, the chief painter within the domain, come to the palace. He summons him to the palace and he says, Mr. Artist, uh, I'm going through a lot right now. And, and, and the Lord told me to tell you to paint me a picture of peace. This was sort of an odd request. So the painter went away and he painted this beautiful sunset. You know, orange to blue sky and a nice calm sea behind it. He brings it and he shows it to the king and the king looks at it and he becomes disgusted and the king says, ah, that's not peace. Mm -hmm. Go back and paint me a picture of peace. <laughs> so the artist, he goes off again and he begins to try to think of what kind of painter he paints a picture of a loving couple. The couple are laying before a wonderful warm fireplace on a bare skin rug <laughs> with roasting marshmallows <laughs> in the fireplace. What, what could be more peaceful than that? So he goes back, he presents it to the king, the king throws it down and says, that's not peace. <laughs> Paint me a picture of peace. Hey, hey, hey. So, the man goes off and he begins to think, and all of a sudden, he has a God idea. You know, that's a different than a good idea. He has a, a God idea. So he paints this third picture. In this picture, he paints this violent storm. He's got lightning flashing. He's got the wind blowing. He's got billows raging. And then in the middle of the picture, he paints a tree. And the tree is bending because of the strongness of the wind. Mm. And then, within the tree, he paints a little nest. And in the nest, he puts a little bird. And the bird is fast asleep. Mm. So he takes it back to the king, and the king looks at the picture and says, Ah, that's peace. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the peace of God yes. is something that can be experienced in the midst of whatever that you're going through. Yeah. Right? What happens a lot of times is people become victims of work, mm -hmm. struggle. Mm -hmm. And it's not something that's immune to the church. Mm -hmm. uh, we all know people that are stressed out. Mm -hmm. They come to church every Sunday, pastor, and ah. they preach a good word, and they, they got it, but then they leave, and they trouble. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. The bills are still coming. Mm -hmm. and, you know, some people are afraid to answer their telephone. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> For fear of telling a lie. <laughs> you know, back in the day, we used to tell my mom, we used to say, you tell them the check is in the mail. Yeah. <laughs> and you're lying. <laughs> you know the check ain't in the mail. You're just trying to buy a few more days. <laughs> you get bad news. Our people don't go to the doctor because, you know, they ain't been in a while. Right. The doctor's going to find some stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. You know good and well, as much as I do, when the doctor tells you you got something that you think you don't have, as much as you put on a good face when you get to church, you are troubled by that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some people receive pink slips mm -hmm. from their jobs, mm -hmm. well. threatening that you might lose your job. Well. Sometimes people do lose it. And mm -hmm. They get very worried and mm -hmm. find that people in church are premature gray. Mm -hmm. Some because they're like me, got wisdom. <laughs> Come on, man. And then, of course, there are those that are just worried to death. Uh -huh. So worry is an issue. It's a struggle that oftentimes men or people go through. It's something, again, that the church has to deal with, that we all have.
have our own sense of worry. And I'm not trying to come against anybody, but I'm going to just say something, and I don't know, so I'm not. I'm just going to say it because God right. said it. Sometimes people smoke cigarettes because they got nerve. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. They find that if I smoke a cigarette, it sort of calms me down. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Then there are people that are hooked on coffee. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. They got to get that push juice, amen, uh -huh. in the morning. Mm -hmm. Don't call them before they had that, that, that push juice, amen. Oh, yeah. And then I got to get my first cup of coffee to calm my nerves, right? You know, things, you know, how, you know, you know forgive me, but right now, but let me drink my coffee. Okay. <laughs> we go through these things, and, we, and, and then marriages are sometimes can cause some disruption. And, yeah. But so, so just because you're in this life, it does not mean you don't have to deal with life. Uh -huh. right. Come on here. Mm -hmm. It would be nice. You know, we get people in the church, y'all know how we do. We tell them, come to God. <laughs> All your troubles will be over. But we don't tell them the second half. Mm -hmm. it, it's a honeymoon period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like getting married. Get married, you're going to be good. Mm -hmm. But after the honeymoon, mm -hmm. now you got to be married. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ain't the honeymoon nice? Mm -hmm. Ain't it beautiful? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ain't it loving? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But then you got to come back to the real world. Oh, no. No, no, no. Don't help me out too much. <laughs> and so we find that people find themselves struggling and, and they're worried and they, they bring it into the house of God. Sometimes you're so worried you can't even praise God. You walk in the house and you haven't got to a place in God where you learn how to leave some things outside. And then once you leave it out, get delivered, don't pick it up when you leave. Mm -hmm. yeah. People come in and get free for mm -hmm. the service. And then when they leave, they pick up what they left on the door. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they take it back with them because they don't know how to break themselves free and understand that just because you're saved, it doesn't mean that you won't have the problems. Mm -hmm. But what it means is the problems mm -hmm. won't have you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the key. Mm -hmm. all, God, all God's people have problems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But all God's people have God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that's, that, that, that's the nexus. That, yeah. That's the X factor. That's, that's right. that as long as I got God, God's got my problems. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what I know about y'all, I've learned how to take my problems. Mm -hmm. And release them to God. Hey, 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 hey. Mm -hmm. you know, why are you wearing yourself to death? Mm -hmm. You look in the scriptures and you find out that the two words that were most repeated by God and by Jesus in both the Old and New Testament is this. Fret not. Mm -hmm. hey, hey, hey. It wasn't a suggestion. It was a command. Mm -hmm. You read in the Old Testament. He said that more than anything else to his people. You get to the New Testament, Jesus was always telling the disciples, fear not, fret Amen. not. What does that mean, to fear and to fret not? It means not to worry. Mm -hmm. Stop worrying about things. Yes. Mm -hmm. Worry will weigh you out. Yes. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in the book of Daniel that the, and I'm going to paraphrase, the objective of the devil is to wear down mm -hmm. the saints of the Most High God. Yes, mm -hmm. He is not a one punch knockout artist. Mm -hmm. It's a battle of attrition. Mm -hmm. The devil can wear you down late at night. There are folk that get up with rings under their eyes because they are sleeping at night. Mm -hmm. they're, they're tossing and they're, and they're turning and because there are things going on in their life and they're saying, God, I don't have a hold of this thing. And, and I've been threatened by different yeah. things. And, and God, I'm just concerned. And, and, and some folk go to bed saying, Lord, just take me tonight. I don't want to wake up tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to face the things that I'm facing. Yeah. I'm talking about some real stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I'm talking about some real stuff that also oftentimes impact those that are within the ranks of the church. Mm -hmm. the old folk just say, tell the truth, check it out. If you got issues, just admit to God. Right, God help me. Yeah. David, I love David. David, you know, uh, I, you know, David, David said, when my heart is overwhelmed, mm -hmm. lead me to a rock. That's high. That's high. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were saying, but when I'm troubled, God, take me to foundation. Lead me to See, one thing about shouting is after you shout, you got to put your feet back on the ground. Uh -huh. I wish I could just shout at work. I wish I could shout on the bus. I wish I could just shout 
we got to pay my bills. Amen. Amen. But y'all can go pay the bills. Well, go ahead. What pays and helps you to get through things is the ability to understand, and I want you to say this after me, to respond. Somebody say To respond. respond. What happens is we react to things. We got to respond, respond. to things. Mm -hmm. What I love about the Apostle Paul is the Apostle Paul was someone that said something that we all quote in many of his writings and many of the verses that he writes. There's something we quote. He says, this is something that I've learned. He said, I've learned to be content. Mm -hmm. yes. And whatsoever state I am. Now, he said, learn. So what does that mean? That means I wasn't always that way. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You talk about somebody falling to pieces, Paul, you're looking at it. Yeah. <laughs> Paul says, but I've learned something. I've learned how to be content. I've learned that thing, life happens. Life happens. Life happens. Just because you got saved, the devil don't roll over and play dead. Just because you, you know, you say that the blood wash and, and speaking in tongue and, and quoting scripture. The devil say that's nice. That, that's nice. That's all right. You're feeling good. You're feeling good. You got a good shout on this morning. Good. You got your shout on. All right. Let's come back to life now. Mm -hmm. And let us understand that you got some issues. Yeah. And all that shouting hasn't solved nothing. Mm -hmm. And Paul says, I'm going to tell you something. Paul says, I've learned. I learned in whatever state I am, I'm going to learn how to be content. Mm -hmm. That's right. I've learned how to do that. Mm -hmm. Is that way? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> God bless you, man. God bless you. He said, I have learned uh -huh. something. He said, I have learned yes, sir. how to be content. Amen. Now, content in the Hebrew is different from content in the English. Mm -hmm. Content means satisfied in the English. Mm -hmm. In the Greek and Hebrew, content means satisfied with the knowledge mm -hmm. that right. things are going to change. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah! Mm -hmm. so it's not saying I'm just happy. Hey, 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 so why are you so happy when you know you can't pay your bills? Oh, because I know God's still going to take care of you. I'm not focusing on that. I'm looking at what God is doing right now. Amen. He said, I'm content because I know right now, yeah, things are not the way I like them, but I also know it's not going to stay that way. Mm -hmm. hey, hey. Job said, I'm going to wait all the days of my appointed time until mm -hmm. my change comes. Mm -hmm. In other words, my change is on the way. Mm -hmm. Now, how fast my change comes depends on how fast I can change how I can respond yeah, to stuff. Right. Yeah. You know, hey, yes, you said, give him glory in all things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Worshiping him everything. Yeah. Not for everything. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't praise God for bad times, yeah. but I thank him in bad times. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what we've got to learn to do. We've got to learn to say to God, even though things are not the way I prefer them to be. I'm going to tell you something about God. God don't mind us venting. I tell St. James, God loves us venting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just got to tell God, I'm not happy today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I ain't going to say it, Lord. Uh, Lord, things are not working. I'm complaining. David complained. They called the Psalms. The book of Psalms is the mood book. Because mm -hmm. David had different moods. David, and whatever he was feeling, he right. It ain't right. It ain't fair. That the, 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 the unjust are doing better than I'm doing, God. What up with that? You ever have one of those things? What up with that? I'm living right. And they doing what they want to do. And I feel like a stepchild. What up with that? You know, what up with that? I done paid my tithes and I'm still broke. What up with that? Anybody have a what up with that? Can you be honest? Yeah. Do you ever feel that way? Yes, sir. But it even matter when David would complain and David would talk about things that are not fair, and they would always start out that way, but by the time you get to the end of the song, he would reverse course. And he'd say something like, but in the end, Mm -hmm. yeah. He's still God. Yeah. In the end, hey, 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 hey. I'm still going to worship him. Yeah. That's why God says, see, that's a man after my heart. See? Amen. He's not just a worshiper, but he recognizes that even with all that, I would still take all of that to serve him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That he's still God. Mm -hmm. And in the midst of my struggle, 
in the midst of what I'm going to do, I'm going to learn how to be content because that's the only thing I have any control over in this life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can't control nothing that happens to you. Mm -hmm. The rain fall on everybody. Uh -huh. There ain't going to rain on me, step outside. Yeah. Right? yeah. But what you can control is how you respond. Mm -hmm. to the things that come against you. Mm -hmm. And what he's saying is, no matter what goes on in my life, I'm not going to let that thing get so next to me that it causes me to lose my joy. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that for a minute. Yeah, let's talk mm -hmm. about that. Can we talk about this? Mm -hmm. yeah, hey, hey. Don't yeah. confuse it with happiness. Mm -hmm. See, some of us are happy folk in the church. But God needs some joyful for you. Mm -hmm. see, see, happiness is conditional. Mm -hmm. Happiness depends on the husband or the wife treating it right. The children obeying the rules. Job doing it right. The cat and the dog getting along together in the house. Uh, life is treating me pretty good. So happiness is conditional. It's up and down, but joy is constant. Hey, yo, Yet despite what's going on, I still got joy. Yeah. And the Bible tells me that the joy, joy. of the Lord yeah. is my strength. Yeah. People say, Pastor, can you pray that I get some more strength? What? No, yeah. I'm going to pray that God give you some more joy. Uh -huh. <laughs> If you get joy, oh, well. you get strength. Mm -hmm. but, but I ain't asking you to pray for that, no. Oh, well. It's what you need. Uh -huh. No, I want you just want God to, to just open my head up and, and get like Popeye with the spinach and just pour some spinach into me. <laughs> and I'll get all the strength. <laughs> I'm watching so many cartoons. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's what Popeye did. Popeye opened up a can of spinach and drunk it. I don't want God when I'm standing in this line right now just to be like Superman. Transform me. Uh, and then a wise pastor says, I'm going to pray that God give you some joy. Mm -hmm. Amen. But Nehemiah said, the joy of God. Yeah. That is my strength. Yeah. Amen. The devil can't take your joy. Mm -hmm. You got to forfeit it to him. Mm -hmm. The devil can't take nothing from you. You got to give it up. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because the devil has no authority. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give it to Bishop Nelson. The late Bishop Nelson said that it's an oxymoron to say that God is all powerful. That's right. mm -hmm. And then say the devil got power too. Mm -hmm. How can he be all powerful? Uh -huh. And then you're going to say, man, the devil got some power too. What that means that God ain't all powerful. That means 99.999% power belong to God and just 1% the devil got. But when Jesus got up, he said, oh, power. Oh, in heaven and earth has been rendered unto me. He stripped the devil of principality and power. He took the keys of death, hell, and the grave. He snatched them from it. I love that. Y'all know Easter. We like to talk about the resurrection. I'm going to talk about the insurrection that went on down, <laughs> that went on down in Hades. Mm -hmm. He got up out that grave before he come up out that grave. What did he do? He went down into hell itself. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. And what they tell me that the, the imps and the pits and the, the demons, they were down there throwing a party. They said, oh, we got it. And all of a sudden, this big light came on in hell. And somebody hollers and lift up your gates. <laughs> All ye doors. Uh, and be ye lifted up. Uh, ye everlasting father. Uh, and the king of glory. Uh, and the king came in. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, he came in and, 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 and he said, I'm going to take up. All of y'all that didn't go to heaven because, you know, when they died in the Old Testament, they went to, to Upper Sheol. Not hell, but Upper Sheol, and they were in prison. He said, but I'm coming to get you now that I'm resurrected. So I'm coming to get you. He's ordered for me to get you, though I got to get the keys. That's the reason that where's Satan at? Where's Satan at? He walked up to Satan. He walked up to Satan, and Satan got keys around his neck. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, you know how you know somebody important because they got keys. Yeah. You know, people walk in the door with keys. That means I, I got, I'm a, I'm a, I got keys. When they walk in, when a 
the janitor walk in, he got the king of the kings. <laughs> He's like, I, go, I open and lock the church up. Uh -huh. I got some authority up in here. And that's why they like to get the big keys. Uh -huh. And they like to tuck the shirt in so you can see who's in charge. Uh -huh. Yeah, pastor, but I'm really in charge. Uh -huh. Do you see my keys? <laughs> 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 the big key. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> the devil had three keys. Uh -huh. He said, come here. <laughs> now, I'm not going to ask you for the keys. Mm -hmm. Snatch them right off his neck. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, sir. All the devil could do is say, Lord, don't do no more. <laughs> Please just leave. God said, I'm going to leave, but before I leave, I got one more thing to do. Okay, come on here, I got to fulfill mm -hmm. the book of Genesis. Yeah. yeah. What I want you to do now is I want you to get on the ground. And he lifted up his foot. The Bible says the head of the serpent yeah. will be bruised yeah. by the heel of the son of man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm taking total authority over you right now. Yeah, yes, I'm going to tell you right now the devil got no business in your pocket. Right. Hey, hey, hey. Your finances. Your romances, mm -hmm. whatever you're dealing with, the devil got no business controlling nothing. Mm -hmm. He got no business in your bloodstream. Mm -hmm. He got no business in your eyesight. Mm -hmm. He got no business in a lot of places where we've given him authority and say, wait a minute, devil, wait a minute, you have no authority. Wait a minute, you are illegal. You have trespassed against the bloodline of Christ. And I'm going to tell you something right now, devil. I didn't know that, but now I know. See, when you know better, you do better. I didn't know that you were already defeated. I didn't know that. But you've been woofing at me all this time. You've been telling me what you got, and now I read somewhere you ain't got nothing. All you got is a lot of lip and a lot of talk and a lot of wind blowing. But you can huff, you can puff, but you're not going to blow my house down no more. It ain't happening no more, because I recognize right now I've got authority over you. And I'm serving notice on you right now. You're not going to take my lunch money no more. You're not going to pump me no more. You're not going to bluff over me no more. I'm going to stand on the principles that God gave me. And I'm going to look you square in your face. Hallelujah. And I'm going to tell you, you got no authority. Mm -hmm. Oh, y'all got to hear me. Uh -huh. Listen, how do I get the peace of God? Because I got authority with God. Mm -hmm. He told Peter, I've given you the keys of the kingdom. Uh -huh. Now, you know, I got the keys, you're going to get the keys, and you can loose, and you can bind things. How many know y'all can bind some stuff in your life? You don't have to accept everything. There are things that you can say in the name of Jesus. I bind you. My late grandmother, my mother tell the story and said that my, my, my grandmother had seven girls. Mm. That's that, all right, girls. So we know we got problems right now. Oh, yeah. Seven girls. Yes, sir. Four boys. Yes, sir. No problem with the boys. Uh, but the seven girls. Uh, it was leash. Yes, the truth. Uh, they wearing each other's clothes. Who all my stuff? You know, all that stuff. Brothers get together, man. You want my shirt there as long as you wash it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So her mother said, later at night, she would hear her mother pray. Mm -hmm. Then she'd get up early in the morning and say, Mama, I'm going to pray. And she said, when she got older, she said, Mama, why? You shouldn't even pray so much early. She said, because I had to get up for the devil get up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. And I had to pray God behind them spirits. Hey, hey. Oh, that, that I had peace in my home. That I ain't gonna have to go through all these things. And, and this was a, a sign of wisdom. Mm -hmm. So we don't know the authority. Mm -hmm. Like the disciples, they're on this ship. Mm -hmm. They don't know the authority that they have. Yeah, come on, pray it around. You know, you know, sometimes Jesus will purposely make himself unavailable. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're like, where we at? God said, Well, you got this. Because I ain't left you. <laughs> and sometimes we talk about, you know, God, where you at? Well, I'm here. Amen. Yeah. I'm on his ship. But, but I'm not going to come stop topside. Because you see, I've been preaching to you for a long time. I need to find out, have you learned anything yet? Yes, sir. So even though I know there's going to be a storm, I'm not going to tell you. But I did going to give you a clue. We're going to the other side. Uh -huh. okay, we're going there. But I'm not going to tell you what you're going to encounter. Because if you knew what you were going to encounter, he said, Lord, I ain't getting on the ship. Amen. Amen. 
So God ain't going to tell you. No, God will give you a promise about how great things, but what he won't show you is what you got to go through mm -hmm. to get to where he's taking you to. And I dreamed that God gave me a great big church with 10,000 people. Oh, that's nice. But the other shoe going to drop, too. <laughs> Somebody call it the, the, the small, fine print. You know, God's always got small, fine print. We see the contract. Then we go back and complain to God. God says it was right there. Then you just overlooked it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, 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 is, is it all right? Mm -hmm. Amen. Is it good? Hey, hey, hey. All right, I'm going to bring it in. I'm not going to keep on, you. Come on, come on. But, but I'm, I'm trying to help somebody tonight. Yes, sir. I'm trying to say that we need to take our power back from the devil. Yes, We've oh. given up our power. Yes, We're afraid. We're fearful. What is the fear? Remember that fear? F-E-A-R, the acronym? Fearing false evidence appearing fear, real. Fear, yeah. <laughs> oh, fear, fearing, real. Yeah. fearing, what was it? False, false evidence appearing real. real. Mm -hmm. hey, hey, hey. That's what fear is. Oh, You're looking at stuff and the devil's blown this thing up, making you think it's real, and it's all a facade. Yes. And the devil's just bluffing you, and he's taking advantage of what you don't know. That's right. The Bible says, my people perish, not because the devil is so strong, no. but because my people don't have no understanding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes, they don't know me like they ought to know That's me. And in Bible, what you don't know will hurt you. Mm -hmm. In the world, what you don't know can't. But in Scripture, That's right. what you don't know That's right. will hurt you. Because the devil will use what you don't know against you. That's right. He tried to use it against Jesus in the wilderness. He quoted Scripture. Yes, he did. did he quote it? He said, you know, if you be the son of God, do X, Y, Z. For it is written, Jesus said, but it's also written. Man shall not live by bread alone. But by the word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You so God arm me with your word. Uh -huh. How do I get my word? Oh, something called bottom class. Mm -hmm. Well, go ahead. Uh, no. That's right. Something Sunday. called Sunday school. Yeah. Yeah. Something called personal well, time of the day. Uh -huh. uh -huh. That's right. Uh -huh. yeah. That's right. Hey, hey, hey. Everything all right right there? Yeah. Yes, sir. I went to a church one time, pastor, years ago, and I didn't, know, I didn't know what to preach. I, 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 and the Lord, I said, Lord, I don't know what to preach. I mean, I know you got me going to this church. I had never been there before. And he said, you're going to get it in the pulpit. Yeah. Wow. I, I, I'm like, no, you know I don't like that. Right. You know why I don't like that? While I'm sitting, yeah. you're going to drop something in my spirit. Yeah. I need to know what I'm going to talk about. Yeah. Give me an idea. Because yeah. I might miss you. I might miss you. So I'm sitting up there, and it's getting time to preach. And I said, Lord, I ain't heard nothing yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I was calling. I said, sometimes said, maybe somebody's going to testify. <laughs> and God said, that's it right there. Maybe they're going to sing a song, God. Uh -huh. But I didn't get that connection. Uh -huh. And uh, I said, Lord, I'm in trouble now. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, I had a pastor come, XYZ, come on up, preach. Mm. I stood up there. And you're coming across like you was right there. These are looking at their Bibles. They're not your pastor right there. <laughs> yeah, we, there is no book of Benjamin. Yeah. <laughs> but everybody, including the pastor. Oh, my including God. Including the pastor. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. yeah. I didn't look at him. I didn't want to shame him. Oh, I didn't mean, look at him. I was like, did he got a witness? Did he got a witness? You weren't there either, Doc. Yeah, we know yeah. you weren't there. Yeah. And so I knew right there what God was telling me. These people need some teaching tonight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have shouted ourselves down to the core. Come on. Mm -hmm. Come on it's what we internalize. Mm -hmm. Come on. And, and I'm just like this. I think everything in church has its place. Mm -hmm. Jesus was a teacher. Mm -hmm. The Bible says he sat there down. That's mm -hmm. up. And taught them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the longest sermons, the, the, what, the Beatitudes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. They stayed, talking about being in church all day, they stayed there for more than no lunch break. Y'all know how we do. We need yeah. a break up in here. Yeah. When is the break? <laughs> Where's the bathroom break? <laughs> when is the food break? There ain't no break. Yeah. Jesus was teaching on that now, man. And it was long. And it was hot. There was no air condition. Mm -hmm. There was no good seating that's sitting on the ground. Mm -hmm. They didn't think it'd be long. That's why nobody but the little boy bought the lunch. Mm -hmm. If I'd have known it'd be long, I'd have packed my lunch. 
<laughs> but the boy's mother had some foresight. Yeah. They said, I've been to church with Jesus. <laughs> it's going to be a while. <laughs> I love but you know what? It's good. I love it, Bishop. It's a good one. <laughs> Jesus got a lot to say. Go ahead, Bishop. And I don't know what the yeah. other folks going to do, but I'm going to make you some fish sandwiches. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I know Jesus. Yes, sir. I know him. Yeah. And when you know him, you know how to comport yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey. Right? yeah. Amen. So Jesus was a teacher. You, know, you got to be taught. One has to be taught how to be, find peace with God. Mm -hmm. You don't conjure peace up. Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whose mind has stayed on him. In other words, I, they know so much about me. They know more about me than they know about the devil. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And they know what I said about him. Mm -hmm. And when the devil's telling you you're going to die mm -hmm. from your condition, but I read somewhere he says I'm going to live. Yeah. Yeah. The devil says you're going down. Mm -hmm. I read somewhere... It's what they call opposite world with God. In order to go up in God. In order to get. You gotta give. So whatever the devil tells you, it's the opposite. The devil says you're not gonna make it, stop shouting. That means I'm gonna make it. Because the devil's never gonna tell you the truth. If he says you're not gonna make it, you're not gonna make it in the church. You're not gonna make it in this life. Stop giving God praise and thank you, Lord. Because the devil don't know how to tell the truth. Yeah. He will never tell you something that's going to set you free. So you compare and say, hey, wait a minute. If God says it's this way, then that's the way it's going to be. That's enough to make me have my peace of mind. That's enough to make me to walk like I ain't been through that. Mm -hmm. People look at pastors sometimes and say, pastor don't know what I'm going through because they ain't going through nothing. Because it's our job to look like we ain't going through nothing. Uh -huh. Life is hard. Y'all be saying we need to get the oil for him right now. He coming in here. He wants to be encouraging us. He's talking about things are hard, Doc. I'm going to preach to you, but life is hard. I, mean, I, I didn't come down and participate in worship. Worship, but you know, life ain't good right now. I got nothing to lift my hands about. But, but, but we got to learn that when, 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 you, when you're dealing with God and you grow up in God, you learn that even when I don't have it, I got it. Yeah. That's right. And what you're doing, you're sending a message to the devil. Don't mess with me. Yes, I'm going through the fire, but I'm not going to smell like it. And I'm not going to look like it. And while I'm in the fire, not after I get out the fire, but while I'm in the midst of the fire. When did the Hebrew boy start shouting? In the fire. In the fire. When did Daniel go to sleep? When he was in the dead. We're going to pray after we get out. No, wait a minute. He said, no, I'm going to have peace by a minute. Yeah. Right. Right. The glory. That's where God works at. Yes, sir. That's where God works at. And the more stressful it is, the more calm God brings you. Yeah. You understand? When you understand what God is doing. I told the church this morning, I'm in a place right now and I'm spiritually talking too. Don't nothing matter no more. Mm -hmm. That's in the natural life. Maybe it's age. But things they used to get next to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I am not bragging, but I think I'm gonna say this because only because it's, it was said to me. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was standing with some people the other day, and this man walks in, and he was talking about, I can't see that well no more. He said, but y'all young people don't understand that. And I said, okay, how old are you? He said, I'll be 51 on my birthday. <laughs> So I said, well, uh, I think you're the young one. He said, how old are you? I said, 64. Okay. He said, I think you was younger than me. That's, that's, that's what God do for me. <laughs> I love it. I love it, Bishop. I love it. I love it. So I yeah. Like that. Yeah. He said, you ain't yeah. like that. Pull my license out. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> 
You said you were born in 1955. Uh -huh. And I said, yes, sir. I'm closer to the 65 than I am to 64. Uh -huh. And he said, why you look like that? Well, I serve a God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I don't worry about stuff. Yeah. And you know what I stopped years ago? And I'm going to bring you that. I got a lot. Yeah. Go ahead, Bishop. Land in the rock. Preach the gospel, huh? And, and it's a story of the, this bishop who, who passed it. He was having all kinds of trouble in the church. Um, you know, as a pastor, you can't sleep sometimes. You can like issues and you can hear about them. And that's our job to be concerned. It is our job, Lord, help them. They ask for prayer and they're dealing with different things. Maybe the church bills are not being met and we need money and things are going on. And he wasn't going to sleep. And in the midst of one time, he was tossing and he's turning. And as he's tossing and turning, an angel tapped him on the back and said, Roll over and go to sleep, Bishop. I got the night shift. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm say right now. I love it. I love God's it. got the night shift. Yeah. God says, I got this. Amen. The Bible says night was made. For sleeping. Yeah. That's what it said, right? Yeah. And as a child of God, why ain't you like the little bird? <laughs> sleeping. Mm -hmm. While the storm is going on. Mm -hmm. You can't do nothing about the storm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Amen. Don't let the storm control you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus was teaching you. Yeah. You're going to have storms in this life. Yeah. But don't you let the storm control you. Yes, sir. Yeah. You take authority over it. Mm -hmm. By being calm anyway. Mm -hmm. Go to sleep. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Mm -hmm. Go to sleep. Just go to sleep. And I'm telling somebody right now, taking all kind of no doses and all that, go to sleep. Mm -hmm. People can't sleep. Why? Because they got mad and like that anxiety. Things are going on. Like they change things. The trouble is all around. I can't sleep at night, God. I can't sleep. And they can't do nothing during the day that there's trouble, that there's concerns. And these things happen and these things are real. And I'm not dismissing that. But I'm saying there's another side to the story that God is there. And God can take you through those things. But you got to learn your responsibility. And that is to know what the Lord says. Hey, hey, Put those hey. things in the application. It doesn't mean you're not going to go through. doesn't mean the storm is not going to come. That storm, indeed, it did happen. But Jesus said, listen, you can get through the storm. And sometimes instead of talking about the storm, maybe you need to talk to the storm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on here. Yeah. Talk hey, to hey, the storm. Hey, hey. Mm -hmm. Is that what Jesus did, right? Mm -hmm. He talked to a tree. Mm -hmm. He said, if you talk to a mountain, yeah. uh -huh. talk to your storm. Uh -huh. And you tell that storm, you're not going to make me a victim. Uh -huh. You are not as big and as bad as you're looking at. Uh -huh. I've got authority. Uh -huh. And I'm going to sleep. Uh -huh. Thank you. Uh -huh. And I'm going to have peace of mind. Amen. And I'm not going to worry about stuff that I can't change. Amen. 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 Maintain your calm. Just say, no, I'm not going to do it. Make it a matter of prayer. Say, Lord, you saw, you saw it coming before yeah, I got here. You saw, you, matter of fact, you let me get a storm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. saw that storm. Right. Mm -hmm. And that he was teaching right there. When he went to sleep, he was sending a message. Mm -hmm. He taught something more than he could say. He said, y'all ain't getting it. I didn't say, remember, he was chastised. I said, yo, you ain't got this yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he said, how long I got to teach you? <laughs> Every time I turn around, yep. y'all still... <laughs> Wait a minute. Did we have a sermon about this? He said, How long I gotta suffer you? When are you gonna understand? Hallelujah. It ain't as hard as you think. And that's the problem. You're thinking too much. I'm just gonna believe God. And I'm gonna let go. It's difficult to do that, Derek. It's difficult. I know I've been there. And I find myself sometimes still want to clutch to things. But then as soon as I start clutching, God tells me, oh, you're slipping back in the old habit, son. Mm -hmm. Let it go. Mm -hmm. Maintain your calm, because you got to preach tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And you can't preach if you bow. Mm -hmm. well, you're like, something wrong with him today. Oh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pastor got more trouble than me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to take it. I do. <laughs> but the trouble. Oh, it ain't got me. Yeah. I said, it ain't got me. It, it doesn't have me. Mm -hmm. Whatever's going on in my life, I don't talk about it because it doesn't have me. Mm -hmm. I talk to it. Mm -hmm. And I respond to it. Mm -hmm. 
because I'm determined life is not long. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to have peace in this life. Oh, yeah. Jesus said, my peace, my peace. I give to you. Hey, thank you. Not as the world gives. Uh -huh. I give to you because you trust in me. Amen. God's peace is passes all understanding. Mm -hmm. And it's a peace that people say, how? What? Who? Because they can't exist. It's not you can exhibit. Oh, yeah. hey, hey, hey. This is something that you can exhibit. Mm -hmm. And the glory goes to them. Mm -hmm. Come on, stand your feet. Let me give God a give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Come on, stand your feet. I am somebody to say hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, say it again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you say it one more time? Hallelujah. Because God says it's for everybody. Amen. So right where you are, right where you are, this prayer is for everybody that's under the sound of my voice. Because we all need some more calmness in our lives. We all need the peace of God. Everybody in here, to a person, even some of the children, even thing they deal with, for them it's an issue. Well, there's no more than homework. Are dealing with things. Yes, sir, Lord. From the pulpit to the back door. At any moment, the devil can just do things spirit the pot and you find yourself stressed out. And the Bible says that Jesus taught in the last days there would be so much stress, people would literally start dying of heart attacks. Because stress kills. Yes, sir. Worry kills you. Yes, it will. They teach that in, in medicine. When you have a lot of stress on you, stress kills you. It's up. The number one killer of mankind, stress. That's what kills people. Yeah. Stress. Why are people sort of psychotic? Stress. Uh, yeah. The devil works through the mind. Yeah. He can get a hold of your mind. He can stress you out. Jesus said, or rather he says through Paul, be ye transformed hey, 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 hey. by the renewing of your mind. That's right. You can't change until your mind changes. People want a body change, but they don't want a mind change. Uh -huh. Your body conforms to what you think. Uh -huh. What you think becomes your reality. So he says, I got to control your thought lights. So you can have the peace of God. So Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray for everyone, including myself, underneath the sound of your voice. I pray, God, that each of us in our own place in you, we're all in different levels, and you speak to us and deal with us on different levels, and we see the word of God on different levels according to our understanding and according to the things that we are dealing with. But in any case, God, you're able to reach us. And one thing we know is common is that stress can take anybody out. We are all remarkable if we are not diligent in our walk with you and not yield to the strategies of the enemy where he comes to take down the people of God. And he plans and devices what you said in your word. No weapon that has fallen against us shall be able to prosper. Right. Now, God, the thing about that, it won't prosper because we will find to do what you tell us to do. Sometimes, God, we find ourselves strengthening the hand of the enemy unwittingly. Yes, That's the things we say and do only throw fire on what he is doing against us or fuel on the fire. Because out of our own lack of understanding, we defeat ourselves and we undermine the work that you're doing because we don't know how you work. Amen. Help us, God, to get closer. Hey, hey, hey. Help us, oh God, to let the word be in us and let it be in us and dwell in us richly, God. Help us, oh God, to live out that which we hear day after day, that which is taught us week after week. Help us, oh God, to let that be our true reality so that we can begin to experience the things that you intend for us to experience in this life. Hallelujah. Joy. Hallelujah. Peace. Hallelujah. Love. We don't have to wait to get to heaven. We can have heaven on earth. In spite of what's 
going on. Hey, hey, hey. But we are the victorious people. Yes. We're not looking for victory. We got the victory. Yes. That was the walk in that victory. Yes. That was the walk in the peace yes. that you have willed to us when you said, my peace will I give unto you. Yes. It's in your will, God. Which includes peace. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. We serve notice of the devil right now. Yeah. His days of torture, Amen. torment are over. Amen. From this night forward. Amen. You're done. Yeah. I know what I'm supposed to know. And I'm gonna act on what I know. So we serve notice on you right now. Yeah. You have no authority. You have no power.
be free so good. I was gonna write a little check for me and first lady. Now I got up to me. Yeah, fuck.